Well, it is definitely summer here in Niagara Falls and the grass cutting's going crazy out there. There's string trimmers and lawnmowers and blowers going all over the neighborhood. Now, yesterday, Carl asked me if I could help him out by sharpening his lawnmower blade, which I can absolutely do. And I know we talked about this a little bit with Brian's lawnmower next door. I sharpened his blade. But I thought maybe today we would take a bit of a deeper dive into how a rotary blade cuts, how to properly sharpen and balance it, and we'll start with a little bit of history on rotary mowers in general. Now you can always skip through using the time codes below to get past the history section if all you want to do is learn how to sharpen a rotary mower blade. But you know, stick around if you want to. It could be interesting, you never know. So let's get going today on Dino's Tinker Shed. Wow, this guy is just string trimming up a storm. You know, the rotary mower that we know today really has only been around since about 1945, 1950 is when it was really developed. Before then, the common mower, if you had one at all, was a real type mower. The one that sort of spins like a drum and it has a bed knife on it and it shears the grass as it goes. Now the challenge with those old style real mowers is they're really hard to maintain for the average homeowner. They were expensive to make. They, were, they would dull quickly if you got into any kind of dirt or any kind of debris in the soil or the grass. And, and quite honestly, if the grass got too tall, they really didn't cut it very well. And anybody that's had the chance to actually try one of them will tell you they're a workout. Now, shortly after World War II, a young inventor out of Missouri named Leonard B. Goodall was playing around with this newfangled rotary mower and his contribution was really to come up with a vertical shaft engine with the blade mounted right on the crankshaft and that changed the game for lawnmowers forever by the 1960s well rotaries were pretty much outselling real mowers nine or ten to one and nowadays you're hard pressed to even find a real mower now, the heart of the rotary mower is the blade, and if the blade isn't sharp, it doesn't cut very well, and that's what we're gonna talk about in today's video. So let's first take a look at the difference in how those things cut. I'll give you a bit of a demonstration, and then we'll get to the sharpening. Okay, let's go get this done. So for our experiment, we're gonna pretend that this string trimmer line is actually turf grass. And I'm going to clamp it in our vise, so the vise would represent the root system on your, on your uh, grass, right? So you can tug on it, shouldn't come out too hard, or too easily, sorry. And this set of secateurs, these Felco secateurs, are our scissors. So this, let's say this is our real mower. It comes in, and with that scissoring action, easily, see how easy it cuts through there? And it can take very fine cuts. And that's how a real mower works. It literally gets the piece of grass and snips it off. And that's why sports fields and golf courses use these. They don't bruise the tip. They don't damage the end or fray the end of the grass like a rotary does. Now, if we assume that this bread knife is our lawnmower blade, the lawnmower blade swings like this. You can see it just, it just pushes it out of the way. Now, how a rotary works is you keep the blade as sharp as you can. It bites into the side of the turf grass blade and it does it at such a high speed that it can actually sort of cut the tip off. It frays the tip. Now we're going to try to do this. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but uh, I'm going to try this with this bread knife. Here we go. I took a chunk off the end. It's reasonable, but if you really look closely, it's frayed. It's hard to do, and I'm not a ninja. There we go. That is how a rotary mower cuts. 
And that's why this edge has to be as sharp as possible because it has to actually bite into that turf grass blade and then cut through it before the blade bends over. So it's important to have the right uh, speed for your mower. So you want to run it at its maximum speed and keep your blade sharp and well balanced. That's how it works. I thought that maybe the first thing I want to do is talk about the general anatomy of a lawnmower blade. Now they seem pretty simple. They're a piece of metal that's sharpened and they spin at a high rate of speed. But there is a lot of technology in these blades. Now I believe this one came off of a Toro lawnmower. That's what Carl runs. So there's basically um, your, your stamped steel blade. This one here is actually arched, so it actually, uh, the tips sort of fold down at the end. It's interesting, interesting uh, design. But there's always, in any case, there is some form of central mounting bolt that goes in right here. These two holes on the outside have a plate with two locating pins that come up from the bottom to secure it from twisting on the crankshaft. And you can see that this blade is actually profiled. It, it's bent and forged in such a way to give it some additional stiffness. As we move out to the ends, we're going to start to see, obviously, the cutting edge here. And this one's in, you know, it's not terrible shape. He's hit a few stones and some rocks, probably, but I've seen much, much worse than this. And then you're going to see right here this sort of raised area at the back. And this forms, um, I'm sure this works on Bernoulli's principle, which is what makes airplanes fly. It accelerates the air up above the blade, which pulls the, the actual grass strands um, upwards so that the blade, when it comes around, can cut. Now the majority of your cutting duties take place out here at the end of the blade and if we look closely you can actually see that the end of that blade is rounded a little bit probably from excessive wear the 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 uh, sharpening profile itself is pretty rudimentary we're going to do this on a bench grinder so it'll get a little bit of a hollow grind and we want to try to get out as much of this damage as possible it shouldn't be too hard the biggest challenge will be balance what we'll be doing is we will be running our um, our blade against the grinder in a fashion that's sort of like this. Now there's a few things when you use a bench grinder that you want to be aware of. One is your tool rest and the distance of that tool rest from the grinder stone itself. You don't want more than about an eighth of an inch distance between the grinder table rest and the stone. It needs to be fairly tight so that things don't get sucked into it like this and jam. The other thing is the trueness of the stone itself. Now I'm going to true this before I start grinding the actual um, lawnmower blade. I'm going to do that because it's easier to take a little bit off every time and make sure the, that the stone is true before it gets in really bad shape. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use one of these diamond dressing tools. They're really simple. I'll turn the stone on and I will grade the stone down with this diamond surface on the end of this tool. And it'll create a nice uh, aggressive surface on the stone, but it will also square it up and take out any imperfections that might be on that stone. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to put on a dust mask and some safety glasses. Now I can't stress the importance enough of wearing a dust mask or respirator when doing this. Now it does take a light touch with this tool, but we just grade it back and forth like this, keeping the tool square to the stone, and you can see how much stone dust comes off of this with that diamond grater. Eventually you'll get the stone almost perfect. Now we're going to try to follow the factory edge on the blade here, and we're going to do this by flipping the blade upside down and resting it on the tool rest and then using long strokes from the tip of the blade all the way into the bottom of the factory gullet. We're going to try to match that factory edge angle as best we can and try to get as many of the nicks out as possible. Now, 
this doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm going to stress this. These blades are still a fairly rough type of technology, but you get as ma the majority of the nicks out and get the blade as close to factory as possible, and that will give you the best cut quality that you can get from one of these rotary mowers. Now I'm going to keep inspecting it and going back and doing both sides until they're pretty much even, trying to take the same amount of material off. This one looks good. Let's go to the next step. To finish this up, what we're going to do is I'm going to put this into the, our vise here, and I am going to use a mill bastard file. This is a very small one, and I am going to work it along the profile of that edge to actually smooth out the, the cutting edge itself. And you can use this to balance as well. Instead of having to go back to the grinder, you can come in. And some people will say, oh, you got a file like this. You really don't. I use the file and I push it along here and this actually produces a superior edge. There, there's a term for this. I'm sure someone out there can tell me. Um, I was showing that, that particular maneuver from my brother-in-law who's a tool and die maker and it produces a superior smooth flat edge. So you can kind of see it, it's coming together really nice here. I'll do the other side and um, then we'll balance it. Well now that we have our blade sharpened, reasonably sharpened, it's never going to be a, a Ginsu 2 or something here. but. It's sharp enough that I'm confident it's going to cut well. We need to balance the blade to get it reasonably balanced so it doesn't shake the whole mower to death. Now, they do sell products online that are like a little cone that fits within the, the center hole of your blade and allows you to balance it really well. Um, it's interesting, Our, the mower shop that I'm familiar with uh, used to have a really fancy one they had on the wall that would balance it with ball bearings and everything. And, what they found is a nail in the wall worked really well. They just put a nail in the wall, hang it on there, and it got the blade close enough that the vibrations weren't too bad. Now, for me, I don't like nails in my wall. You've probably seen I like the shop kind of tidy or the shed kind of tidy. What I do is I'll use a very thin shafted screwdriver like this, and I'll just put it through that center hole and put the blade through it and allow it to tell me which side's heavy and which side's not. That's pretty good. It's not perfect again. I might take just a couple more, no, I, I think maybe just a couple more passes and we'll be good to go. This should have us pretty close. And you'll see I use a flat screwdriver here and I rest the flat on the front face of the vise so that the screwdriver doesn't actually roll. And this way, I think we're pretty good. All right. a long time since I actually brought a lawnmower blade in to get it sharpened by anybody other than myself. Just a few simple tools and a bit of knowledge and you can save yourself a lot of money. And it also allows you to have some satisfaction to know that you did the job yourself. Now this blade's ready to go back on um, Carl's mower. I think we've got a very nice edge on it. Again, it's not perfect. But for Carl, it'll work just fine. And for most homeowners, that'll be the case. So I'd like to thank everybody for stopping by. Please put some comments in. Tell me what you like and what you don't like. Those comments help me to understand what you want to know about and if I'm on the right track here. This is a fairly new YouTube channel. So until next time, I'm Dino. Thanks for stopping by Dino's Tinker Shed, and I'll see you soon.